what is going on guys it is mystic spade and right now I'm actually gonna be doing another tutorial video for all of you uh, going over open broadcaster I know there's a lot of people still out there using uh, X split and FF split and a few other ones but this one is actually a free software that is available to anyone that does live stream uh, it has various multiple different builds they have an actual full release stable build and then they have test builds now the version I'm using is a test build it's named the one ring test build but it actually open broadcaster uses far less CPU resources than XSplit or FF split or anyone else like that and XSplit for whatever reason I have a 4.6 gigahertz quad core CPU uh, over it's overclocked I have 16 gigs of RAM I have a very nice computer but for whatever reason I cannot stream in 60 frames per second and 720p using XSplit. It doesn't let me because of the amount of CPU resources that it takes. Now, in Open Broadcaster, I can live stream 720p, 1080p, either or, in 60 frames per second without any any issues whatsoever and any CPU loss uh, or any you know anything too intensive on the CPU. So, pretty much what you're going to do, it's going to be essentially the same thing across all programs but whenever they did go up into the test builds here they actually did change a little bit of things here and whenever you first start it's gonna have just this one scene here you know and it's not gonna have anything to the to the list here so what we're gonna do we're actually just gonna add new scene so it's just a I guess a test sequence so what we would do you're just gonna right click you know we're gonna right click and then click add scene let's just name it scene 2 and this this is your transition so you know you would just pick this to pick whatever you want to show up on your screen window at any given time okay so and then your sources are what's going to be inside the scene and it's going to be the same thing so you would just right click in the sources window and then you would highlight add so if you're running a capture card like a capture card that's able to be picked up internally you know like a H or a black magic Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD, which is what I use, uh, Avermedia Live Gamer HD, uh, anything like that you can use as a direct source. Otherwise, you would actually have to use, uh, I do believe, Game Capture or Window Capture, which you could use it as a monitor if you had a dual monitor setup. And if any of you need help with that, I can go over that in a different thing. But whereas me, I'm, I have an Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to Video Capture Device, and we're just going to leave it named that, and see it automatically comes up with my Avermedia. And it comes up with the things that are available to be used. So it comes up with my Avermedia HD Capture Card, or my Logitech Webcam. And you can do multicam in this as well. You can do uh, webcams and whatnot, and get them you know whatever different ways you want to but since my webcam is used by another program right now I can't do both I can't show you how to do both but what this is you it, you can choose the resolution you want it at if you want to do a custom resolution frame rate whatever you know we're just gonna leave that normal and you're gonna use use device audio and for this I always output to desktop you know and leave this turned up but I will always turn down my system audio which Let's see if this actually goes away here. Let's you would right click on your little speaker icon down here in Windows, open up volume mixer, and I lower my system sounds to about here, and this actually seems to keep it a little bit lower on the stream. That way my mic my mic volume is over my game volume so people can hear it. Because lower in this doesn't seem to work for me. And I just leave it to use device audio. You can change it to the Aver Media. Uh, driver if you want to or you can change it to the driver of whatever you want but it's best to just output the audio to your desktop you know that way if you want to listen to music and stream at the same time you can actually just put your headphones on and still have the game audio and listen to music over your computer without without it affecting anything and then we're just gonna hit OK leave it at that and see if you go to preview stream now we have our video stream as soon as my program catches up with me Uh, it's not responding. It's probably going to crash. Da, 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 da. Alright, see, now we have our video here. And I'll just turn on my, P, my PS3 controller so we can see that it's working. We have audio. And see, we're working there. We got it going. And this is just a preview. And you can, once you have it previewed, 
you can actually edit it and it brings up this little red you would click edit scene and it brings up this little red box to where you can adjust the sizes of anything and we'll just go to hmm let's go to my scene one here because I have a lot of stuff on my scene one and see we have I have my logo and you can actually uncheck the ones that you have I have my logo I can uncheck that and like I said you can actually and I might be able to have my webcam here let's turn this off bam there's me there's me talking to my webcam and you can actually hit edit scene and adjust if this thing wants to work with me here here we go yeah edit scene and it'll bring up the red border and you can actually just adjust this as you want to do it you know and that's real simple and though if you want something over something you can just uh, like if you want something that's always going to be on top you can choose like my logo that I do I have this logo you could right click on it and then you can pick move to top you know you can move the top that way it's always going to be on the on the top of the layers no matter what or you can just physically move them up move them down you know you could right click and move up or move down depending on where you want it but pretty much I leave my my capture card at the very bottom and my logo is at the very top so all right let's go get in let's get into the settings here let's go ahead and stop the preview let's get into the settings uh, this is my twitch I have it set to my twitch stream uh, English naturally and what you do you actually can name these and then save them that way you have multiple different ones you can actually locally record with this too so if you want to record PC gameplay or uh, live commentaries or anything like that you can record them with this program as well and then we'll go to encoding uh, no and then you can choose to have a constant bit rate or a variable bit rate I choose variable bit rate for live streaming that way it's not it's a lot less strain on your net uh, my bit rate that I stream at is 2200 quality is 10 AAC audio codec bit rate is 160 and broadcast settings this is just where you put in all your information live stream twitch uh, the server that you're you're using I'm in Dallas Texas so naturally I'd be using Dallas Texas server uh, your stream key all that jazz and then the, your file path if you want to record if you want to save it to the hard drive while you're streaming you can do that I only recommend using this if you're if you have a separate hard drive for it to save to because if you're live streaming and you're writing it to the same hard drive that your PC is running off of it could lag everything just a little bit so if you have a, a RAID 0 format or a totally separate hard drive you can use I you you know I would suggest having it save it save the recording to the other hard drive and then video base resolution I have it custom 1280 by 720 and then this is just where you control your audio settings like your desktop I have my desktop audio device set to speakers you know that way you know nothing is confused it always comes out of my speakers and then my microphone is connected always uh, advanced settings I didn't change anything here you can actually if typically in in how that you want in the CPU preset the CPU preset how it works is the slower you pick the more CPU intensive it is, but it will also make your uh, stream a lot more clear. So if you have an overclocked newer generation i7 or uh, was the 3770K, you know, overclocked, you could actually put it on medium and it'll look crazy good. But I actually just leave mine on the default, which is very fast, and it's it's really good. There's not a lot of artifacting, which artifacting means pixelization for those that don't know that and it works just fine I don't change any of the settings and a lot of the newer versions of the test builds have the noise gates I don't mess with this at all and one thing that a lot of people do have issues with on uh, open bot broadcaster after they get it all set up there's uh, either sometimes it can be a mic audio delay from between your webcam and your mic uh, some of the newer newer uh, release test builds of open broadcaster fix this on its own but at the same time there are other version other problems that have occurred for me which is the video card or my uh, live stream capture card it the audio is desynced from the video by a few seconds uh, sometimes it's not as bad sometimes it's really bad but normally what I do I just like I told you before just leave it as the device audio so we'll, these are the settings here I just let leave it at this don't change anything 
and then I just restart my computer and it works fine you know and you cannot you can test record it on before you go live like I said I actually have a recording profile set up to where you just switch it to record it saves it to a file that I designated you know and then you can just go back and review it because it's everything's gonna be synced up perfectly on the preview window whenever you're watching it and playing but the recording is what it's actually gonna be doing so I actually would just pre-record it look at it make sure everything is in sync and then I just go on my way and start streaming and that's pretty much the easiest way of how to get set up and everything on here uh, the only thing that would really become an issue outside of that is if you have if you don't have the available internet you saw that my upload we'll just go back here like my encoding how I have everything set oh this is my recording one so let's go to my live stream one profile boom and then I have it set to 2200 but I have a 5 megabyte or f yeah I have a 5 meg upload so 5 megabits per second and the reason what that is is you want to try to use half that or allocate half that to your to your live stream that way it's going to be good quality but you also don't want to go too low or too high because if you go too low it's going to be really bad quality and people aren't going to watch it but if you go too high people are going to have a hard time watching it there's a lot of people that say since my stuff is 720p 60 frames per second that their PCs can't handle it but you can kind of counteract that by lowering the bitrate but I figure a nice probably 1700 to 2500 bit rate is really good for an HD stream depending depending on certain other variables you know like how old your computer how good your processor and whatnot stuff like that but other than that I figure anything above a thousand is watchable it just depends on other multiple settings but I figure from personal experience if you want it to be clear it needs to be 2000 and above if you want it to be clear and watchable it needs to be 2000 and above uh, but like I said guys this software is entirely free doesn't require a torrent download or anything like that you can go to their website which I'm gonna leave it in the description you know and they have multiple test builds that you can search on the forums and uh, download and give it a test and come back to this video and like I said mine is actually called the one ring test build and this is the software number or the version number along the top if you guys want to actually check that out and try to download this one so you know exactly what I'm talking about uh, but hopefully this helped you you all out a little bit open your eyes to an, a different broadcasting software that is far better than X, X Split in every way the only thing that X Split has over this broadcaster that is that I do like that this one doesn't have is transitions you know which would be great because in this one if it, let's see if it starts. All right. See, in this one, if you click the scenes, it will actually just. Uh, if you click the scene, it just straight switches. There's no. And here I am again. There's no actual straight up switch, or fade, or swipe, or anything like that. And whereas X Split, it does have that nice fade into and fade out of, which I like. You know. Whereas this one, it just has. It just has the actual. It goes right to the scene, and that's it. But that's the only good thing about XSplit compared to this program. Anyways, guys, this was Mystic Spade. I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, please leave a like on the video. Uh, I would appreciate it very much. And if you know anyone that needs help setting up their live stream, sh share this video with them. Because I'm pretty sure it can help. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm out. See you on the next one.